Hi, this is Russell White. Welcome to the RS Logix 500 training series by Automation Technologies for PLCMentor.com. Hi, and welcome to this video on numbering systems. In PLC programming, we often have to deal with something other than just what we're normally familiar with, which is a decimal numbering system. In other words, we count from 1 to 10, and, and we carry the 1 when we get uh, to, the, to the point of being at 10. What I want to get into is, is some of the other numbering systems that we might see, such as decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal. Now, these are, these are terms and numbering systems that you will have to become familiar with with PLC programming. They are very, uh, very normal to come across them. And, let's, and I think when we explain a little bit about the numbering systems, you'll understand why you see them so much in a programming environment, such as a PLC. So what is, what is a numbering system? What is, what is a base 10 numbering system? Well, the base 10, it's just a different way of saying decimal. That's just a different way of saying pretty much what you're used to. So... When we say base 10, we mean a decimal system. In other words, you, you count from 0, 1, 2, and on to 9. And then when you get to 9, there's no single digit uh, representation of that. That's, well, since we're in a base 10, that's the point at which we carry over and we have two digits now. So we have a 1, and then we start counting 11, 12, so we add a 1. And, and this second digit goes ahead and goes up again until it's 9, and then it carries over and we have a 2. So that's the point at which you carry no digits bigger than 9 with a base 10 system, and you carry over when you reach 10. All right, so that's important to know because that's something we're familiar with. It's just kind of breaking down what you're used to so that we can get into now what you may not be used to. <clears throat> so what we look, need to look at now is the binary system. All right, I know you've heard binary if you've dealt with any kind of computers. You've probably heard of binary. You've heard all zeros and ones, but what does it really mean? A binary system is a base 2. In other words, the number gets carried over when your digit reaches 2. Well, it doesn't give you a whole lot to work with. You know, when you, when you, you never see a 10 so in a base 10, so when you get to 9, you carry the 1. Well, when you get to 2, you carry the 1. So in a binary system, you have, I'm showing four digits here just so we have something to work with, but we have a one. Now when we get to two, we actually carry over, and so in essence, a ten equals a two <laughs> in decimal. You see what I'm saying? An eleven equals a three in decimal. So, uh, you know, you can think of it as zero, zero, one, one, zero. Anytime you get, anytime you add another number, you're going to carry over to basically a new digit. Now this is this is because computers handle zeros and ones. They handle on and off. That's you know you think about your outputs in a PLC or inputs in a PLC, they're going to be on or they're going to be off. So that's the reason we need a binary system, but it's good to understand how it works and why it's like it is. Now let's go to another one. Let's go to octal. You probably you may not or may or may not have heard of octal, but it's an important number when we're talking about computer systems because there's a reason for it. It's actually base 8. So what the heck does base 8 do for us? Well, let's, let's define what it is first. It, no digits bigger than a 7. So when you count up, when you get to 7, the next number you're going to carry over and, and you're going to have 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we're at 10. 11, 12, 13, and so on. And, and when you get to, to, to 17, the next number is going to be 20. There's no 8s in octal. All right. Now, why do we have it? What, what's it good for? It translates well from a three-digit binary. In other words, it's very hard to think in binary and be able to shorthand binary. But computers think very well in binary, zeros and ones, but we don't. So with octal, it gives, it gives a little bit better way for us to be able to think of the numbers. And most people after they've worked with a binary number for a while, a three-digit number is very easy for them to recognize what that number would be in a one, you know, in a decimal system, in essence, 
it would be very easy for him to look at this. I can look at 111 and say, oh, okay, that's a 7. I, I, I can actually look at that. I can actually look at this and see a 3 when I see that binary number. Now, if you start act, adding extra digits on there, I'm going to be lost because it, it's, it's just too much for my, I don't think in binary. However, we do think in decimal, and octal is very close to decimal, except for now you're carrying carrying over in you know at seven. You don't have any you don't have any eights or nines. However, what it does for you, you can group your binary number into three digit groups and convert it very easily into octal. Okay, so now we've gotten to another we've got three and we've got a one over here. If we had two more zeros, it'd be our other group of three. So we can separate this into two groups, zero being zero and one one here. Now this will become, we'll, we'll, we'll make this a little bit more clear in the next slide, but you can see what you're doing, these three digits always are similar to the three digits we had over here, and they correlate directly with their octal counterpart. Same with the next three digits, they correlate directly with their octal counterpart. So that's, that's what it's for. Let's look now, a hexadecimal is something we see a lot more than octal. It's something you'll see and you'll, it'll, you'll be asked to uh, look at something represented in a hexadecimal form in the PLC. So it's something to understand what it is. It's base 16. No digit bigger than a 15. So you're going, what? Do I, one digit is uh, a 15? Well, they get that way. They, they use letters. So the letters actually correlate with our decimal 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So let's look at that. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's just keep on going 7, 8, 9. You see it correlates directly with decimal at this point. Then it gets crazy. When we carry the 1 over in our decimal system, we start going to letters A, B, C, D, E and F. F is our last one. So you may have seen something. You may have seen this in the PLC at one time. You may just not have you know, really understood what it was. When we get to F, we carry the 1. That's our, that's our 15. We're at, we're at 15. We carry the 1, and we have a 1, 0, 1, 1. And now our right digit correspond with, with something we're, we're used to. But that's what hexadecimal is. Now, what good is it? Just like octal correlated with the last three digits, hexadecimal correlates with the last four digits. So it translates well from a four-digit binary number. So we see this seven here. Well, you notice in all three of these forms there, seven is the same here. All right. But now when we get over to a bunch of ones in these four digits, that correlates directly with our highest hexadecimal number. So I went ahead and dropped off the octal because it wouldn't fit on here, but and, and I think most of you will understand decimal a little better, just so you can kind of get a feel for what these hexadecimal numbers equal. But look at this. Now we've got these four digits are a 1, correlates with our 1 over here. These four digits are a 0, correlates with a 0, 1, 2, and, and so on. And you can pretty much group a binary number in a, in a groups of 4, and you will be able to determine the hexadecimal equivalent of that. So that's important to know. This has just been a quick introduction in some of the basic numbering systems. We'll get into a little bit more later if we need to, but I want you to understand the basics of the different numbering systems that you'll see in a PLC. I hope this has been useful to you, and I look forward to being able to talk to you in future videos. Thank you. This has been Russell White with Automation Technologies for the PLC Mentor Training Site.